Hello guys, this is Tanmay and I welcome you to the second part of the French Revolution series with good learners. Without wasting any time, let's have a quick recap of the last class. In the last lecture, we discussed that how due to a confusion among the people, on the morning of July 14, 1789, citizens rallied against their king Louis XVI and in search of ammunition, destroyed the prison fort Bastille, killed its commander and released its prisoners. Then we looked at the history to understand this outcome. Louis XVI of Bourbon family was crowned the king in 1774 and married to Princess Mary Antoinette of Austria. Upon becoming the king, he realized that his state was bankrupt. We then looked at the five very important reasons for this bankruptcy, which were wars, maintenance of the palace in Versailles, freeing of 13 American colonies from British colonial rule, 10% interest on all the loans, and other governmental expenses. Then we looked at the social structure of France. This was a society of estates which was bifurcated in three categories. The first estate were the clergy, the second estate were the nobility and the third estate were the commoners. So let's continue. The society was structured in a way that made the rich richer and the poor poorer. Furthermore, a very small number of farmers owned the land that they cultivated. Almost 60% of it was owned by the nobles, the church and the other richer members of the third estate. Cherry on the top was that the members of the first two estates enjoyed certain privileges by birth, like exemption from paying tax to the state. Moreover, nobles enjoyed further feudal privileges which allowed them to extract taxes from the peasants, that is, the third estate. Further, peasants had to extend their services to these so-called lords, however the lords saw fit be it working in their homes or their fields or serving in the army or participating in building roads etc. The church also drew taxes from peasants called tithes which was one tenth of their total agricultural produce. The third estate had to pay taxes to the state as well. These can be understood by categorizing them in two types. The first is direct tax which was called tail and the second was indirect tax which was levied on items of daily use like salt or tobacco which is similar to the cess or gst which is levied now now we are going to study what is subsistence crisis subsistence crisis is a, an extreme situation which is created by either natural or man-made factors in it the basic means of livelihood are endangered between 1715 to 1789 the population of France rose from 23 million to 28 million. But the grain production could not keep up with the growing numbers and its demands. Thus the price of bread rose rapidly. But the labourers in the workshops were on fixed wages, hence they could not keep pace with the inflation. During the said period of time, conditions became even worse whenever drought or hail reduced the harvest. Now for all these problems, the general outbreak amongst everyone was shown by participation in revolts, but the entirety of the third estate could not really carry out a full-scale measure to bring about significant change to their situation. And this situation was changed in 18th century with the emergence of middle class. These were the people involved in overseas trade and had access to education and enough power in the society to bring the third estate out of this abyss. Philosophers also played a major role in shaping the revolution and bringing about an awareness to the mindset of the people. Philosophers like John Locke, Jujoc Husu and Montesquieu initiated the ideas of a democratic society through their writings. Their ideas were frequently discussed among people of the country and even read out aloud for the people who could not read. They forwarded the idea of equal laws and opportunities for all. They wanted to abolish the privileges received by the first and the second estate by birth. Zhuzhok Husu, in his two treatises of government, proposed a social contract between the people and their representatives. Montesquieu, in his book Spirit of Laws, proposed a division of power within the government between the legislative, the executive and the judiciary, which is very similar to our government system nowadays. So this was today's lecture. Please do like, share and subscribe. If you wish to connect with us, we are just a click away. Our social media links are in the description. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe. Thanks for watching.